hello guys welcome back to my channel today we're gonna do a very simple exercise in values with very simple shapes my reference is this picture that i took from um senior living in galveston and uh we're gonna be working on this little square here i think this is gonna be very interesting to paint when we take a picture we don't necessarily need to copy the picture we can extract some piece that we think is interesting and hopefully i will show you some tricks to do this glow here that's my pencil drawing and i'm gonna remove most of the lines i just wanted you to see it before i remove the lines using my needle eraser i'm gonna erase most of uh, most of it and I think this is gonna be a very quick painting of three values. I'm not so sure what I'm doing here. Uh, I did trace the shape of this uh, tower, but I don't think I'm gonna need it. Anyway, let's um, get started with some clear water, hopefully not looks a little tinted to me should be clear water and there we go and i don't want my paper to be wet i just want enough moisture to run the paint and I'm going to apply all over it a mix of quinacridone gold and orange. I want to go a little darker than our reference. And maybe now it's very shiny, but as soon as I start painting, you're going to have a better resolution. And I'm going to start outlining my cloud why am i starting with the cloud because i want to save the whites that give me the contour contour of the cloud i know it's, it's crazy fun and I'm gonna go all over the place. Remember that part of the paper is dry. So I'm just going and adding gently. can go a little darker here because it will be darker and I'm going all over the building all right i think i what i like about uh, starting the painting as crazy as possible is it gives such a dramatic effect at the end and let's see 
can always create a little more drama. Adding some relock. And I can use a dry, clean brush just to make some adjustments on my cloud. And while we wait, the paints to dry, I'm going to work a little more on my clouds. And start adding all the values. Constructing the shapes. And make sure that you leave enough white and keep this transition. When you're doing clouds, it's always good to alternate hard edges and soft edges. And I'm going to use my heat gun to dry this a little bit, at least uh, my cloud. I do use hair dryer. I don't have anything against hair dryer, but I use a heat gun more often. I think it's less noise from the time that I'm painting. I may I don't want to wake up the whole household. And I'm gonna go and start doing a big mix of a darker value that I just put on the sky. I'm going to add to this whole structure. So I'm just going to dump color. I know it's very orange-like, but that's okay. And I want to go over. The paper is very dry. So. This is a old brush. I better get a brush with a better tip.
and I'm going to rotate the paper just a little bit so I can paint. Uh, hopefully this is the only wash that I need to do on this shape. We almost I left a little bit here. I'm really enjoying this brush because it carries a lot of paint and has a very, very nice tip, very thin tip. So if I want to paint a detail, I don't have to change brushes. And this is very useful if I'm doing a video for you. If I'm painting to myself or to social media, I can paint slowly if I want. So I'm just following my lines. Oops, and trying to be on camera. All right, and as soon as I finish, these details, uh, they have this little structure up here. It's not a cross. I'm not sure what is it, so I'm just gonna make a little ball, kind of. Note that I'm dropping a lot more paint on the side opposite to the light. that is coming from that direction just because I want I mean I could put the, the light coming from somewhere else okay and right now I'm changing brushes again I'm going to go with a flat brush just because I need to move a little bit faster with uh, the uh, my paint is not uh, drying the way I want so I need to go back here and add a little more I'm basically uh, painting without uh, any extra water. And what I'm noticing is that uh, the paper is depositing differently. I don't really like it, but there's not much what I can do about it. OK, 
okay I taped this paper down so I have a little more control and I decided to go darker even though I just said I know that I was gonna do only one wash but I'm gonna go back here over my whole paper and I'm gonna go a little darker this time I put a lot of water you might have seen the glare and I am going away darker for drama purposes and of course I want to keep the area where my cloud is as it was I kind of like the way it was so be gentle in this transition using more dry brush I apply a lot of paint and then I lift and then I go very gently just uh, like I wipe in the floor Just creating some little edges here on the cloud. I don't know, it felt like a I need it to go a bit darker. I should not forget the lower base here. Make sure that uh, everything is covered homogeneously I'm gonna get a little bit of this gray and be gentle here because as you can see is a way darker and you can go over it and gently splash it before it becomes a stain Can always put more water. Whoops, a way too blue. <laughs> no panic, you just take it up. Although I have to come back, so
in general, the base, the very bottom of the cloud should be darker. But this is a question of preference, I think. And if you really want to paint clouds, if clouds, skies in general, are something that um, you want to learn well, I have painted a series of skies in Texas, but I am no expert at all. You guys need to see the Russians. I, there are so many incredible artists on the other side of the planet. Oops, I have. <clears throat> Let's blend this nice and neat, hopefully. If it's not blending, you always have the resource of use a completely dry brush and wipe off oops, the paper, not the camera. Sorry about that. And with a little bit of patience. Maybe a bit too much. But I went darker and we having some problems here that dry it differently. This is my heat gun. Um, when you are using um, blow dryer, sometimes you move the pigment too much. When you are using a heat gun, you dry parts of your paper differently so if you want to be on the safe side do not use either if you are really painting uh, and you want your painting to be successful don't do either anyway let's uh, proceed for the next wash that is going to be right here what i'm doing right now is again is dry the paper is dry and i'm doing my best to keep my hands very light oh look at this wasn't as dry as I thought. I'm trying to be very gentle, not to disturb too much the underneath paint. This area is very dry though. And I should stop this before it goes too far. A little piece of paper towel. Yeah. 
and I come here and I just thought this you can always come back and fix it but for now let's stop it and let's hope I have enough pigment to cover this whole area and hopefully this wash is enough to settle the surface of the paper on the those areas that didn't dry properly Notice that I'm trying not to overlap too much the brush strokes. There is violet on this mixture. And we're going to give me headaches if I don't do this properly. And that's the time that I like about the video is when it looks really bad and looks hopeless and that is exactly what i want you to see because it does look hopeless but it won't be hopeless in a bit so if you're painting and your painting start looking terrible don't panic. It's the normal joy of the watercolor. And everything seems to be lost. And everything looks like it's a big mess. You just keep going and try to take away this um, things that happen. On the sides. Try not to disturb too much the paint. Again. And what I'm going to do now is to go very dark. I don't want to overlap the lines. I 
want to be very dark but not black and try not to disturb the previous wash and you might be thinking why didn't you go dark all the way i didn't know i want to go dark i actually still don't know exactly what i want but i thought to create some light here would be interesting and that's what i'm attempting to do now there you go and This is a little more wet than I thought, so I just have to be gentle. I am um, doing some makeup here, meaning that uh, I'm just moving the, pig the pigment. Without much... Uh, There we go. I think now I, I'm starting to like this. There we go. Ah, okay. And I completely forgot about this part here. So, what am I doing now? Okay, that's unexpected, but I think I'm gonna do a roof. There you are.
Maybe I'm leaving a window here. Okay. Some strange things. That don't exist. But you can always invent. I know um I'm not a What I think I need to do right now is to add a little bit of dark right here. right here I, this is a bad angle this is all makeup and I think we can't stop right here and the last thing i want to show you is maybe the here i need to go a little dark there there okay i need to clean up this little detail here that uh, the I don't know if you can see so well, but I can see it, so it bothers me. And I'm gonna sign in yellow right here. The last thing I wanna show you before we say goodbye is a trick, sandpaper that you can use a tiny little piece to adjust a tiny little piece to adjust your clouds suppose you don't like the way they come you go ahead and press it and pull it press and pull it i think i did this on the very first video on the seagull first video and you can do this on your cloud and you can sand your paper whenever you think you need but you're gonna change the texture of the paper and the paper will react differently to the paint so don't be too crazy at least try see it gives a great effect overall effect and i am gonna let this dry and scan and put online for you to see the final result thank you very much for watching see you next time